I'm Charlotte Ann Lucas with Now Cast SA, and we're here with Andres Andujar, who was uh, just uh, uh, announced at tonight's hearing that he is the CEO of the Hemisphere Redevelopment Corporation. Right. Um, and um, um, is that, uh, is, did that just happen? The well, mayor the just announced it. The uh, announcement was today. We signed uh -huh. the contract today. Okay. So it is fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been talking about this for some time. The, um, the board had gone through a rigorous selection process. They had published uh, their interest to hire the CEO nationally mm -hmm. with uh, professional organizations like Urban Land Institute. And they received many dozens of resumes. Mm -hmm. And um, through a process of uh, review of resumes and then interviews and papers that we were tasked to mm -hmm. write to explain our position and our interest, oh, nice. um, there was homework. We, um, uh, we got to a short list and at that point the board invited a community um, group of about a dozen people that are not on the board but that are in leadership positions. For example, the, the, um, the, the CEO of VIA and people of caliber and intelligence and so on had an independent interview of the final four shortlisted uh, uh, interested parties. So it was very rigorous, and I cannot be more uh, proud than to have been selected after such effort. Well, you, you spent the last, what, uh, how long in Denver? Doing uh, I've been in Denver for a, a little bit over a year. A little bit over a year um, doing the expansion of the Denver airport. Right. And um, yet, um, when they uh, selected somebody, you your home is... Well, my, my house is here. Is here. Uh, I have lived here for 30 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go on projects as needed. Mm -hmm. And this project uh, in Denver is, uh, is an interesting project. $650 million assignment mm -hmm. with uh, Santiago Calatrava as the uh, signature architect. He's, uh, he's a world-renowned signature architect. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's been very interesting. And, uh, but um, that is a project. Mm -hmm. And what I felt and why my interest mm -hmm. is because I think this is more than a project. It is a difficult mm -hmm. program ahead. There is a lot of hard work ahead. But also, I feel a love for our city and our downtown. And I think that this is an opportunity we have to, to make an improvement, to take the successful bones of Hemisphere, and to take the history and to understand what was there, including the neighborhood that was taken out, mm -hmm. to, to take us to the next phase mm -hmm. and to make us all proud of what there is. There is so much love in town for this park. And I hear people say, I met my wife there. I, you know, there are stories of Hemisphere. And uh, so I think that's what's at hand mm -hmm. here, to mm -hmm. make a real change that we, um, we can feature in a few years and all be proud of. Well, tell me, you, you said take the bones. And there are some, some remarkable bones in, that, in, in Hemisphere Park. There are. Some remarkable buildings that, that actually have a tremendous amount of meaning for people here. Oh, absolutely. You know? Um, what, uh, what was interesting, uh, one of the exercises I did, I, I took the old Sunborn maps before Hemisphere. Oh. And uh, now the master planners have a, uh, they can show you this, that um, you can see where the streets were before Hemisphere was created. When Hemisphere was done, many, many families and businesses were moved. And interestingly, we are finding uh, through our research that uh, the University of Texas at San Antonio is conducting for us on the historic structures and the history of the site before Hemisphere, that there was a, a very high uh, number of women business owners in this area. There, were a, a, there was a high number of Jewish families that were taken out. Mm -hmm. And by, by the way, this is the, one of the original old neighborhoods, mm -hmm. Labor, Labor, Labor del Centro. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, this neighborhood had, had a whole mixture as it, as it grew. It had slaves at one time, and I'm talking about three, uh, almost 300 years ago. Uh, we 
had blacks, we had Spaniards, we had uh, prisoners that were released from, from the uh, Spanish War. And so we, I think it is important to, uh, to do a good job in the future to understand our past. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's part of the exercise. We want to understand, for instance, the story that I read um, of the last family that was taken out. Many families left upon the uh, offer by the government. Mm -hmm. and, and so the, great, the majority is not a problem, but there were a percentage of homeowners and business owners that didn't want to move. Mm -hmm. The last families were removed by force by the sheriff. And um, some of these families are here today. And I want to, and I know some of them. I didn't realize that story about their ancestors, and it's just a generation ago. Right. They were probably kids when when this right. happened. I want to talk to them and understand their feelings too. You know, is there hatred, and and is there and is there an option of remediating that to make something more special? That anyway, so that's part of our challenge and our opportunity. Wow. Uh, the, the master planning team was selected through a, a public request for proposals mm -hmm. that uh, was also published nationally. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that uh, the, the board of the Hemisphere Park Area Corporation is intent in a transparent and open process. Mm -hmm. And so they've issued and posted a request for proposal. 21 proposals came, including international names such as Norman Foster and Skidmore, Skidmore Owens and Merrill, S.O.M. Um, many great proposals and Johnson Fain's name is not necessarily as recognized as S.O.M. is. Um, however, for the master plan at Hemisphere, and the questions that they were asking in their request for proposal are, tell us about your park master planning in urban centers with the complications that we have here. Interesting. So it's not just that you work on Central Park. Central Park it has nothing to do with Hemisphere mm -hmm. Park. So even if you were Olmsted, mm -hmm. the designer, the landscape right. architect for Central mm -hmm. Park, we wouldn't have selected him for this. This is a different project. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, maybe we would have selected Olmsted because maybe. he was a genius. But, um, <laughs> You understand what I mean. These were the right people for this project. And there is a way to take buildings like the Women's Pavilion, which was funded by fundraisers that these women put together. They gather the money to put the project Absolutely. in place. And they selected an architect that that is um, one of our classic uh, success stories of architects in San Antonio. And we have so many now and in our history, O'Neill Ford, mm -hmm. but um, many others as well. And, and protégés of O'Neill mm -hmm. Ford, not only for Paul and Carson, but like Plato, and oh, yeah. they, you know, you have, you have a lot of talent in this town. Um, we, need to, we need to understand that it's a jewel, it's a special place. Mm -hmm. And uh, how we do it, that's what this process is about. That's mm -hmm. why it's so important mm -hmm. that the community engage and let us know their ideas because maybe we cannot execute every idea but we ought to listen to every idea. When I have found when there is two strong and differing opinions that it is not because one is wrong and the other one is right but it is because they have a different point of view. One maybe a woman business owner and the other one maybe, uh, you know, I don't know, I, I don't have a good example, but there are different points of view. And when you have different points of view, you see different things. Mm -hmm. If we can get the most complex, different thoughts together and resolve the differences, invariably we have a better result. Find some common ground. Yeah. I like to say, and, and by common ground, I don't mean to dumb down mm -hmm. the project. No. I mean to make it better. And I like to say that I want to add and multiply, not subtract and divide. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do here. We need to just take a building like the Women's Pavilion mm -hmm. or one of the many historic structures. Mm -hmm. And there's there a couple many. of dozen. And uh, 
you figure out they're 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 shelled now. They're empty. Some of them are falling apart. One of my first jobs is gonna it's gonna be that of a roofer. <laughs> Seriously, I gotta go make sure that we don't have water penetration in the old historic buildings and preserve what we have so that restoration doesn't become impossible. And so we need to get we need to incorporate the jewels we have here. And, uh, and so it, it's going to be an interesting challenge for certain. There, there, there has been a remarkable thing happening in San Antonio where people are, who don't necessarily agree with each other about everything are sitting across the table talking to each other. Um, this process has brought another 300 people, and last time it was 300 people um, sitting across the table. Is can you distinguish this or, or contrast or, or compare this to anything from other cities that you've seen in terms of public, public participation? I have, and uh, I have, uh, we've run some, uh, some meetings were in, in Denver for the airport mm -hmm. expansion project. Mm -hmm. and, um, and community participation um, is, is uh, not comparable to what we see in San Antonio. And I try to think what is the difference. And I think that part of it is that there is a real sense of community in San Antonio. Um, there is also concern that, you know, how we do things makes a difference of how we live tomorrow. And, um, and so I, I, I also think that when people show up, they believe that their voice will be heard. And uh, because you wouldn't go if you are wasting, if you felt that you're wasting your time. And I honestly believe that in this particular uh, instance, we are taking notes and we're doing analytics of the instances of repetition of important words that define the part. And it was a very interesting presentation to see that they, they did a fund to coin ratio. So so if it was 13 coins, then it was a 26 font in this uh, canvas of uh, words with different font sizes. Um, so that you could clearly see that history and art uh, and, and people and culture were the big words. And, uh, and so the, the analytics are important. And I believe that, that the, this group will listen and try to interpret and translate mm -hmm. what we are hearing and what, what, what the community is thinking through, through this cross-section. 300 people in this kind of a uh, uh, setting is a, is a true cross-section of mm -hmm. the overall. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, we have every race and many ages and uh, so it's a, it's a good sampling. It, it, it reminds me a lot of SimCity. I mean, what we've, we've seen the SimCity thing, and you can do online SimCity, right. um, and there are actually some interesting online community games now of how to build a park and stuff. The, the park in New York that was built on top of the elevated railroad, Highline. there was a, the Highline was, was um, there was an online game of how do you do that and how do you build the community, how do you gain support and gain advocates and stuff, and, and how do you go through that process? Interesting that you bring up the Highline as an example, because one of Johnson Fain's um, consultants, is a, a financial consultant, is uh, John L. Schuler, who is the chairman of the board of the High Line. And he's our financial consultant here. That's what he does for a living. And so, while I think that the master plan, and it's going to be beautiful, I, I know, I feel it in the room, that what we translate into a plan is going to be fabulous. And that is going to be our inspiration. Mm -hmm. The pictures, the, the images, the, the, the vision of what can be, that is our inspiration. Mm -hmm. But like I tell our architects who learned in school that form follows function, I remind them form follows funding. Mm -hmm. And so this financial plan will be the tool and the weapon by which we deliver the dreams that we are inspired to have mm -hmm. through this master and, and that is going to distinguish this from earlier ideas about hemisphere 
park and the redevelopment that that it, that there is built in pushing this a financial viability. A plan without a without a financial structure sits on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And um, the 2004 master plan served an important role uh, in this exercise because we have not set it aside. Mm -hmm. We have studied what the community said in 2004. Mm -hmm. And what we're learning is that the community still wants those things. We are reassuring um, some of the concepts that came up at that time. The difference is that this time we have a local government corporation in place. They have hired a chief executive officer. And we are structured to deliver the financial plan and the management to deliver in, to, to those projects. Very good. Well, it sounds like um, we're being summoned back um, to the report out, so I just want to thank you so much, thank you. Thank and um, you we will be talking some more. Thank I know you. it. Appreciate Thanks. It.